What's going on, everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona, and today we are going to talk about Northern Arizona versus Southern Arizona. And in this video, I'm going to consider Phoenix Southern Arizona, even though it's really, truly Central Arizona. So if you're excited about this live feed, please do smash up the likes so we can get this video out and have a big participation in our community that is over 8,400 subscribers now. This channel's not even a year old and we've already got 8,400 8, members, 2,000 people in our Facebook group and growing every single day. So if you haven't already joined us, do subscribe and join our group. So let's go ahead and talk about this as we talk about Northern Arizona and Southern Arizona. So if you've got any questions related to, should you move to Southern Arizona? That's gonna to include Tucson. So all the Tucson questions, bring them. Because Southern Arizona, the old Pueblo, Tucson, we're gonna to have to talk about that. And if you've got questions about Sedona or Prescott or Payson or the Mogollon Rim or Pontoff Lakeside, Sholo, Eager, all the way across the page, you name it, Kingman. We can even talk about the Colorado River Valley if you guys want to talk about that, depending on what part. But <clears throat> let's go ahead and dial this in and see who's uh, tuning in. We've already got 21 people, six comment or six up likes. Thank you. Make a video about Far East, like Apache Junction, where I'm at. All right, Henry, we'll, we'll work on that when I get back. I'm getting ready to go down to Mexico. So, <clears throat> yeah. So, just to talk about the differences that you'll notice right off the bat, it's going to start with the climate. The climate in two ways, right? The weather, it's if you don't like snow, don't go to northern Arizona because northern Arizona gets the snow. If you don't like snow, if or if you don't like snow and you want to stay away from it, move to southern Arizona because they don't get a lot of snow unless you're really high up in the foothills or high up in the mountains. I mean, you if <laughs> Yeah, you won't get snow unless you start going up the mountains like halfway or something like that. So Southern Arizona, you're not going to get snow in the summertime. Just to give you an idea of what the weather is in Flagstaff today, it was below 80 degrees. Flagstaff today was about 76. <coughs> if I check the weather right now in Flagstaff, it says 70 degrees. So that's pretty darn good for uh, August 6th, right? And it's going to actually be thunderstorms tonight. It's not going to snow, but I mean, Flagstaff gets pretty cold. I mean, it was even snowing in Flagstaff as late as May. So Flagstaff's the major uh, northern Arizona hub that most people think of when they think of northern Arizona. But right now it's becoming Sedona. For example, if you just wanted to know what the weather was in Sedona right now, uh, the, the weather in Sedona is a little bit warmer than Flagstaff. It's about a mile high, 5,000 feet. It's 81 degrees today, okay? Tomorrow it's gonna to be 88, Thursday, 89. So Flagstaff's about five to 10 degrees cooler than Sedona in the summertime. And in the wintertime, probably about five, I'd say, I'd say in general, five to 10 degrees cooler in Flagstaff than it is in Sedona. Sedona weather is gonna be similar to what you would get in Prescott. For example, so we're talking about Northern Arizona right now, so those of you who are like, oh, I don't know if I want to deal with the 113 in Phoenix. Well, you've got 88 degrees in Sedona and it's still Arizona. So what's the weather like in Prescott right now? It's 73 degrees and raining. Tomorrow is going to be 86 and Thursday it's going to be 87. So about the same weather as Sedona. But again, the reason is Flagstaff is about 8,000 feet elevation. So any of you locals out there, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's about 8,000 feet, right? So down in Phoenix today, if you just want to know how hot it was in Phoenix, it was actually 115 yesterday. Uh, it was pretty hot. But today it hasn't been nowhere near as hot because we got a lot of overcast uh, temperature. We had we were overcast most of the day. It's 101 degrees today. Tomorrow is going to be 105 and Thursday 105. So if you compare that to Flagstaff, Flagstaff's about 30 degrees cooler than Phoenix here in the middle of summer. And it's been like that for most of the summer, anywhere between 20 to 30 degrees cooler. So for those of you who are trying to figure out how to make this work for you when you move to Arizona, you could do one of two things. You could have you could live in Phoenix in the in the winter time, and you could live in Flagstaff during the summer, or you could have a cabin in northern Arizona. And that's that's been a thing. That is a thing that people do is they build these cabins in northern Arizona. And so 
if you're looking for cheap land, you can find cheap land in many of the rural places in Arizona, but Northern Arizona is going to have some pretty cheap land. Uh, I mean, we can make a whole video dedicated to cheap land. In fact, I have, but we could go over the pricing of land right now as we speak, but <clears throat> that would have to be another video. I mean, I've seen, I've seen land for as cheap as $1,000 an acre in places like Heber Overgard, which is Northern Arizona, just up on the Morgan Rim. Uh, so I've seen land as cheap as about one, about $2,000 an acre in uh, Casa Grande, which is, you know, we've seen that, that, that pricing outskirts of Casa Grande. If you're trying to move to Phoenix or Tucson and live in the foothills, you're probably looking at a lot more money than, uh, you know, you're looking at about thirty to forty thousand dollars an acre. Okay, make that video on northern land, says Marcelino. Okay, I will. Keep up the great work, Jeff, with the Arizona education. Thank you, Peter. Uh, let's see. We appreciate your. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, if you guys have questions, uh, do fire them off here. So let's talk about another factor that you're going to want to know between northern Arizona and southern Arizona, right? So. We just talked about the elevation, we talked about the snow, but how about the uh, monsoons? How do the monsoons affect Northern Arizona opposed to Southern Arizona? Well, uh, because the desert areas are different than the forest areas, you're gonna get more dramatic storms uh, in Southern Arizona, like the dust storms, the microbursts and whatnot, the potential funnel clouds, you're gonna get that in Southern Arizona, whereas you're not gonna get that in Northern Arizona. That's something to really keep in mind. Now, if you're talking about recreation, things to do, like activities, things to just, you know, not be bored, right? Southern Arizona is going to have Northern Arizona pretty much beat. If you go to Flagstaff, you'll be like, hmm, this is, this it, Flagstaff is about 10 years behind, uh, if some, some might even say 20 years behind Phoenix. I mean, and what I mean by that is people still kind of dress uh, or, or, you know, they're, I'm not going to say backwoods because that's not the correct word, but they're uh, they're a little bit more country. How about that? Than they are down in Phoenix. The old country, the old country bumpkins, you know, out in Phoenix, they don't really exist like they used to back when you actually had. I don't even really remember too many like legit cowboys growing up, even where I grew up way up in uh, Cave Creek and New River, where supposedly that's the frontier town. You know, I don't really remember too many of the old school cowboys you know, the John Wayne types, right? The guys, the ones that, you know, when you touch their hand, it's like they're wearing a leather glove because they've been, you know, wrangling cattle all day, right? Uh, you know, we got what you call city slickers, right? But Northern Arizona would probably have more closer to like those country, those real country uh, types, okay? Whereas the cities, you know, we've got city slickers. I'm not saying there's not tough knuckle dudes down here, in Phoenix and whatnot, but I'm saying if you're talking about country, country people, you're going to have that in Northern Arizona. You have that in some other towns in Southern Arizona. You know, you'll bump into that in Bisbee and uh, Tombstone in the South, but for the most part, Northern Arizona is going to have a little bit more of that, uh, you know, maybe they don't shower every day kind of thing. <laughs> 52 people watching. Wow. 15 up likes. Thanks to everybody who's been smashing up the likes. What's up, Matthew Majors? How's it going? Um, I'm checking some of the bad cell signal in Flagstaff also. Yes, Henry says this, the cell phone connection in uh, Flagstaff is not as good as we would like it. Now, it's not very good down here. One of the theories that I have about the cell phone, a little bit of a side rant here, is so from what I've understood in my phone calls with Verizon and these other cell phone companies about why the cell phone service was better in 2015 than it is now here in 2019. How did we degrade? Like you would think technology would advance, therefore we'd have better cell phone service. So, you know, obviously I should do other things other than worry about my cell phone. Like how's my plants doing, right? Like I got better things to do than spend time on my phone, right? That should be the story. But, you know, people wanna know why is this cell phone service not so good? And from what I understood is because there's more population, they have, every time they grow in population, they have to build towers to, to keep up with that growth. So if they don't build the tower and then the town grows by 10,000 people in two months, yeah, these areas do grow. Like they just bring in more and more people. And then so you get more and more people trying to pull off the towers. And then that's what happens is 
so they get they, they give these things called peak hours and bottlenecks of service. So uh, because Arizona is one of the states that's growing a lot, it's actually one of the fastest growing metropolitan areas. Phoenix is one of the fastest growing metropolitan areas in all of America. In fact, it actually is the fastest growing side by side with San Antonio. So, uh, you know, that's that's why the cell phone service out in Arizona is not too good. Another thing you guys have been complaining about, not complaining, but saying, wow, this is surprising. What's up with that? The registration and the insurance. So I keep hearing people saying, whoa, they just moved to Arizona. Why is the insurance so high? Whoa, I just moved to Arizona. Why are we dealing with high uh, registration? People are really being blown back by that. I mean, I get more comments about registration and insurance than I do pretty much anything else. Like it used to be, you know, people wanted to know about buying homes and where to live and where's the safe places. We still get those comments, but a lot of people are, are talking about that. Okay, so keep on the track of Northern Arizona and Southern Arizona, right? So the infrastructure in Southern Arizona, in particular in Phoenix, is going to be newer. Uh, therefore, you're not going to have as many potholes as you might have in places like Flagstaff, Payson, or Prescott because the roads are older and they don't grow as much. Let me just put this into perspective because there's more than just one town in Arizona, right? Uh, or Northern Arizona that's big and famous, right? You got Flagstaff, Prescott, and um, Sedona, and Cottonwood, and whatnot. But I'll just compare Phoenix versus Prescott here. So... The rainfall in Prescott, they get 15 inches per year. Phoenix gets nine inches per year. The overall United States average for these for the average is 38.1. So both of them are well below the national average for rain. Uh, snowfall, uh, Prescott, even though it does get snow, it's still below the national average. Uh, Phoenix gets zero snowfall, zero snowfall. But... If we talk, if we're talking about, uh, let's see here, cost of living. So, is what's cheaper? What's more affordable, Prescott or Phoenix? Phoenix. Phoenix is more affordable than living in the Pines. So, living in Northern Arizona is going to be more expensive. You're going to be paying more uh, for these to, to be living in the towns. Now, you can buy that cheap piece of land and build your own home if you know how to do that, and you will probably save some pretty pretty good money, especially if you're in places like Heber Overgard or Snowflake or Strawberry or some of these other areas in Northern Arizona. Utilities are about the same. Uh, Prescott, you're not going to be driving as much. So you're going to spend more on transportation in a place like Phoenix. And even because of that, your insurance rates are not going to be as high in Prescott as they're going to be in Phoenix. At least that's what you would assume. However, groceries, food and groceries are going to be more expensive. Uh, so let me go ahead and dial it in here and see what you guys are saying. Vehicle registration in Yuma is way cheaper than Cali, says Mark. So there you go. So Yuma has pretty good. Uh, I guess we got to go down to Yuma, get a post office box down there to save a little money, right? <clears throat> Why is weather such a question all the time? It's hot everywhere, right? People are, people really, uh, in the winter, people don't like the cold. Like people in uh, New York, they're always like, oh man, I got to get the heck out of this snow. And then when it's hot in Phoenix, people, like people, I'll be talking to someone, they'll be like, I question every summer. This is what people tell me. I mean, I'm telling you like a lot of people say this. They're like, oh, I question every year why I moved down to Phoenix in the summertime because it's so hot. People don't want to go outside. So they always question why they live here. But then, you know, that's just three months out of the year where they're really questioning it pretty bad. But, you know, when you're in New York or Boston or Chicago, you're dealing with the inverse. But even some people say it's so dang hot, they'd take the dry heat any day over that muggy 70 percent humidity in, in uh, the, the, the Great Lakes region. Oh, well, it's cold all over, but it's not too cold in Phoenix. I mean, Phoenix... In the wintertime, I mean, there was countless days in January and there was countless days in January where we were in the 70s, 72. I mean, I was, I was enjoying. I mean, yeah, sure. We had maybe a week's worth, maybe seven days out of the month of January. We had some rain and whatnot, some freezes. But February, we had about the same, too. It was a little bit colder in February, I thought, than January. But, you know, we had a lot of sunny days this winter, you know, sunny, like. Sweating, like you could sweat if you were if you were working heavy labor, you would sweat. 
Um, I'm from Detroit, and I question why I dealt with the so, snow so long before moving to Arizona, says Tone. Right on, Tone, man. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I mean, people, people, some of you guys are watching from places where it snows a lot. Obviously, it's the summertime, so it's hot everywhere. I mean, it's not hot in Flagstaff, though. Apparently, they're at 70 degrees right now, <laughs> whereas Phoenix right now is about 101. You know, 70s a lot different than 101, in my opinion. I'm a native New Yorker living in Arizona. Now ask me anything. <laughs> All right, there you go. Ask, ask her anything about New York. I'll take the warm over the cold. My asthma and arthritis really like it down here. There you go. Yeah, like my grandma, for example, on my dad's side, they used, they used to live out in Chicago before they moved and built a house up in uh, Cave Creek back 60s. So from from uh, Chicago, moved out here in the 60s, or moved to West Virginia for two years and then moved out here, right? And they built a house with a pool and he was a, he was a construction builder and just whatever. But uh, that one of the reasons they had to move out here was because of the, uh, the, the less humidity for my grandma who had, I think she had emphysema. I don't remember exactly why, but people, people had to move out to Arizona. Like that was one of the great reasons why Sun City was built out here is because of the dry air. So I know about that personally, and she just, they just mentioned that right there. Uh, so 65 people watching, 27 smashed up the likes. Thanks to everyone who smashed up the likes. Adam Swan Sternberg was 95% humidity today in New York, was wishing I was there all day. Today was a nice day in Phoenix. I mean, I don't think we got too hot. I mean, it was, it was really relaxing. Today was an easygoing day. It was an easy day, easy summer day. Yesterday was not so easy. We had storms all night last night, just south of here. I was seeing lightning all around. It just didn't rain, believe it or not. I mean, I thought for sure with all the lightning that was in the sky. And we see lightning probably here with the monsoons, probably at least two to three days a week right now. We're seeing uh, electric storms. Not every day is going to be rain, but you'll be seeing lightning about two to three times. And, uh, you know. Yeah, Marcelino, it was beautiful today. So uh, I'm from Puerto Rico and I'm used to the heat, but the heat there is accompanied by humidity. Yes, it's like Florida. Like pe Some people don't want to go to Florida. It's so dang humid, right? So some of the other things to know about Southern Arizona that Northern Arizona is not going to be exposed to. Um, the, the native people, for example, I posted this in our group. If you guys haven't already joined our group, you guys should. But I posted a picture of the uh, Native Americans, the Apaches, the Chiricahua uh, Native Americans, the, the Apaches were in the South. So, uh, you, you know, I, I, I personally am a history guy. So uh, I do have a reverence for the Native American people um, because my dad used to take us to, you know, all sorts of different Native American things. So I grew up with that. But uh you, if you guys have ever heard of Geronimo or Cochise, Cochise Stronghold, um, Apache Strongholds, the North is going to be what you call the Hopis or the Navajos. And then if you go up into Utah, you'd come up into another tribe called the Utes. They're all kind of the same, but, you know, they're different. They, they had different, obviously because of climate. You could go, you could go out, you know, you could go out. If you see a place where it looked like ancient civilizations used to live, you might be walking and you'll find shells that are carved in the shape of lizards or t tortoises or anything and or beads even. And you're like, where did they get that? So they used to trade a lot out here. But um, the northern the northern uh, Native Americans used to trade with the southern Native Americans. And that's how you would get things. And even you got to include what was going on with Mexico. Because back then, the Apaches were all the way down in uh, Mexico. Uh Geronimo, he was he was all he was out there in uh, what was the name of the mountains where Geronimo was down in Sonora, Sonora, Mexico. But he was also up here in Arizona. So it's interesting to know that history and the difference between the Navajo, the Hopi, the Anasazi, the Zunis, and then the Apache, the Hohokam, and all the, all that. And that's why uh, they're always talking about the, the how they use the rivers in Arizona. They use these rivers, Salt River Project. You know, they have the, the, the reservoirs. They have Saguaro Lake, Canyon Lake, Roosevelt Lake, 
all those uh, rivers that pour into the Rio Salado, right, down in Tempe. Well, they got all that technology from canals from the Ho'okam people. But I was watching a documentary just yesterday about the Ho'okam, and uh, they disappeared in about 1400. And they were trying to say, why did the Ho'okam just mysteriously disappear? They were the first ones doing the canals. Was it a drought? Was it a famine? What happened in Phoenix in 1400? And where did these people go? You know, so uh, that's kind of an interesting thing. Got to pay to get your attention. Oh, what's up, Henry? Sorry, man. Was I ignoring you? I didn't mean to. I, I, I'm, I'm looking at things on my screen and I flash back in between here. Uh, anyone tell you you look like Dean Ambrose? No, never been told that. I don't even know who D D Dean Ambrose is, but <laughs> I'll take that as maybe a compliment because I don't think you meant it in a <laughs> negative way. Oh, man. But uh, you got my attention. You flashed up here. So uh, what was I told? I look like someone. Uh, oh, I was out in Phoenix and one of the viewers on this channel was uh, they seen me and I was at one of these places called uh, the Green Nectar. It's like this fruit plate uh, where you get like these veggie. I was getting a turmeric and lemon shot with uh, some veggie kale thing. Right. And this guy, he comes up to me, he's all looking at me, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay, he's just looking at me. I was like, why do you keep looking at me, though? <laughs> you know? He comes up to me, he's like, you look familiar. And I said, uh, okay. I was like, what, what, what does that mean? I was like, okay. Is he he's like, you're on TV. I'm like, no, I'm not on TV. Not on TV. And he's like, Home and Garden Channel? I'm like, no, I'm not on Home and Garden Channel. He, I go, I have a YouTube channel. And he goes, that's where I know you from. <laughs> So, I mean, I, that was like one time where someone said that I look famous. And I was like, oh, well, they know me. Some of you guys have known me from this YouTube channel. Jeff looks like Dennis the Menace with facial hair. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. I just need a calic. Um, oh, man. So, let's see here. Cost of living is way better here than in South Dakota or San Diego. You're talking about San Diego, Mark. I live in Michigan now, but I'm moving to Mesa this month. No more snow. You will not get any snow in Mesa. That's for darn sure. Uh, there, you know, we got a little bit of hail in the Santan Mountains. You get a little, little bit of hail in the Usury Mountains, and you get a little bit of hail around the foothills. You got to go up in elevation because, you know, in these low-lying valleys, no, nothing. All right. So let's go back to the discussion about Northern Arizona and see if we can find any interesting stats. So Flagstaff is the largest city in Northern Arizona. Other cities, we already talked about that. Prescott, Sedona, Page, and Williams. I would throw in uh, Payson. Payson is going to be up the Bumblebee or up the B-Line, the B-Line Highway. Bumblebee is the other one. But then you have uh, a lot of national parks and monuments up in northern Arizona. You got Grand Canyon. You got Petrified Forest, Canyon de Shea. Also looks like it's pronounced Canyon de Shelley. Grand Canyon, uh, Prashant, uh, Parashant uh, National Monument, Navajo National Monument, Sunset Crater. Okay, that's that meteor crater. Walnut Canyon, which is a beautiful place. Wupataki uh, National Monument, Vermilion Cliff National Monument. So those are just parks and national monuments, natural attractions, Monument Valley, <clears throat> Painted Desert. Painted Desert's a petrified forest of a bunch of trees that are, you're like, you know, if some people, like, I don't know if they could still do this, but when I was a kid, you would go over to like some of these old school Arizona guys. You know, an old school Arizona person, because they'll be wearing turquoise and silver. It's for real. You'll know someone's from old school Arizona when they're wearing a, a, this thing called a bolo tie. Uh, how do I know this? Because I know some of these old school Arizonas. These are people I knew that were 70 years old who lived in Arizona, born and raised, that were 70 years old when I was 10. Okay? And I remember I remember they always had these things called bolo ties. Bolo ties are like a rope. It's like a leather rope, and it like crosses down here. And they would sometimes they would put like silver medallions right here and they would have a piece of turquoise. So in my opinion, old school, classic Arizona people, they wear turquoise. So if you see a dude wearing a turquoise, uh, silver turquoise uh, uh, ring or a big turquoise uh, 
watch or bracelet. There's nothing fruity about that. It's it's the it's it's Native American. That's the old way. The old Wild West in Arizona was that was like a thing back then. It wasn't about gold really. It was about turquoise and silver. So bolo ties, turquoise, silver. They might have a belt buckle with a big turquoise rock on it. Uh, they'll make their girlfriends. They'll make uh, rings for their girlfriends with turquoise. Another rock you might see a lot of is going to be this rock called amethyst. It's a purple rock. And the other rocks that I seem to remember that uh, people would wear would be like this red rock called Jasper. Jasper is pretty common. There's a black rock uh, called uh, hematite. So hematite's another one of those rocks. There's also onyx. Onyx is a popular one. So that people from old school Arizona are into gems. So I guess that's what I was trying to say. That's how you know classic Arizonans because they're into the gems. And the biggest rock show in Arizona is actually in southern Arizona in Tucson. Tucson Gem Show. Uh, Oscar says he saw a lot of people like that in Tucson when I first visited for the first time. What does your husband... Oh, wait. Hey, Jay, Arizona is blood red Republican. Most people love Trump here. Flagstaff, not so much, but Arizona as a whole is pretty Trump loving. Okay, Mary. I mean, we try to keep the politics out of it, but uh, I did read your comment. I, I didn't know you were going to mention that, but no, and, and it's all good. I mean, it's part of the culture, right? It's just that stuff gets so combative. I mean, we've got enough combat going on. It's like, let's talk about some of the, let's talk about the gems. <laughs> talk about the turquoise, something we can all relate to. Oh, yeah. Tucson does have a big gem show. Uh, yeah, that Tucson gem show, my dad used to take us to that. <clears throat> my uncle, <clears throat> my uncle passed away in Mexico driving a car. So he got in a car accident in Mexico and he didn't come back and, we got a call that he was down there, but he used to travel a ton. He was a big traveler. He went to Australia about 30 times. He passed away about 37 years old, but uh, he had gone to Australia about 30 times. But because he was from here, you know, he grew up out here, which was big on gems. That's why he would go to Australia to get the opals, but he would go all around the world. But it all started here in Arizona for him. And what he would do is he would go to Australia to get the opals to bring them to the Tucson Gem Show. All right. It's not boring in Yuma. The desert is a block away and the river is 20 minutes from my house. So lots to do when you don't have to go far. If I lived in Yuma, I would have a jet ski. I would have a dune buggy. <laughs> I would probably have a weekend warrior. And uh, yeah, as long as the food's good, I'm happy. I mean, most places... It comes down to the food. If the food sucks, sorry, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big, I'm big into food. If the food quality is not there, we're gonna have problems. <laughs> sorry, someone asked about if Trump Republicans would be safe here. Oh, all right. Yeah, I mean, are we really at a point where we're at a civil war where people are not safe because of their political affiliation? That 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 that's more of a. I mean, we got problems if America is getting to the point where they're like, hey, can I go to a certain state? Will they beat me up if I, because of who I voted for? It's like, maybe we shouldn't even talk. Maybe we could do a little bit less talking about it. <laughs> uh, no, I get you, Mary, though. Thank you for uh, clarifying that. All right. Oh, okay, he was talking to Jay Townsend. Paste and strawberry. How long for a mini vacation? Two, three to four days? Okay, it depends on the time of year, Bonnie. When do you want to go to uh, Payson? If I was to go to Payson right now, I would probably go, uh, oh man, if I was to go to Payson, I'd probably go up on a, like a, you know, three day weekend, say Memorial Day, Veterans Day, something like that. And <clears throat> I would probably consider getting, you know, that's what, two or three days, right? So in that area, you would want to check out, you'd want to consider checking out just anywhere around uh, the, um, Mogollon Rim, just going up to the Mogollon Rim, get just exploring, driving around the Mogollon Rim up top there. Uh, you're going to have lakes that you can explore. There's going to be just, there's tons of area to, to explore around there. Now back, so Payson's, you know, about 2,000 to 3,000 feet below the Mogollon. 
It, it looks like it's it looks like it's called Mo, uh, Mongolian, but it's Mogion. <laughs> There's no N in the middle. And so down on down in the low lying areas, you're going to have beautiful creeks down around uh, that are that are going to be dreamy. Like these creeks that you have around Payson are just so dreamy. I mean, you got them all over. Uh, let's see if I can find uh, some of these creeks. So down in Payson area, I. So you're going to have a place called Fossil Creek if you go towards uh, Strawberry. That's a great place to explore. Uh, I want to try and find this one creek. I, it, it's like a local spot, uh, but I remember you have to go beyond the Walmart. And I think I think it's uh, – so check out Flowing Springs Campground for those of you who like to camp. Flowing Springs, that's a pretty good spot to – uh, check out that's the East Birdie River. Uh, they got Ash Creek, and then um, I'm trying to find out where this dang place was. There's Water Wheel uh, Falls hiking trail. That's pretty nice. So I mean, there's lots of waterfalls up and down this area that you're gonna, you know, you don't have to go to have a soup pie to get a really good waterfall, but you're definitely gonna check out Fossil Creek. Fossil Creek is. It used to be, you know, 20 years ago, no one really knew about Fossil Creek. You know, maybe a few locals. Nowadays, a lot of people are finding out about Fossil Creek. Um, so <clears throat> just be respectful. If, if you go there and you start doing some stupid stuff, and I say stupid, you're going to piss off locals. And then I'm going to get a ration of junk. So I got to put the disclaimer out there. Do not litter. Don't be a moron out there. Like, it should go with that. I, I hate to say it, but people get mad at me if I give away secret spots like Fossil Creek. And then people go out there and they just treat it like, they, you know, like whatever they litter and they don't clean up after themselves. And, you know, they they just I, apparently people do dumb stuff. None of you guys. Right. <laughs> but who knows? Who knows what the heck these uh, people do when they go out there? But, yeah, so Fossil Creek and there's just tons of campgrounds all up around there. Whispering Pines. Uh, but you can also go up on a Mogollon Rim. It's 2,000 feet higher, and there's lakes, you know, fishing. You guys want to fish up there? Go to Mogollon. Go to Mogollon Rim right there. I plan on moving from Orlando with a possible job in North Scottsdale. Can you recommend affordable apartments within 30 minutes that are from that area? Okay. Go to Bell Road. So Bell Road turns into Frank Lloyd Wright. So you can almost say Frank Lloyd Wright is Bell Road, but it's not because Bell Road goes straight and then it starts to curve when it turns into Frank Lloyd Wright Boulevard, goes all the way down to Shea. Anything on Frank Lloyd Wright is going to be more expensive. You go back towards Bell Road, 56th Street and Bell Road, 56th Street and Greenway, that area, you're going to find some pretty affordable apartments. Even if you go up Scottsdale Road, just about right north of Frank Lloyd Wright and Bell, there's a big old apartment complex right there on the canal. I, I would be surprised if it's any more than $1,500 a month. Thanks to everyone who crushed up the likes. We got 40 likes, 75 people watching, so let's keep it going. Uh, but are there no affordable apartments near North Scottsdale? Yeah, there are, Darren. There are. What, well, what's affordable? What are you saying is affordable? Let's talk about that. How about that? By the way, you guys want to know what the safest places in Arizona are? We're going to make a video about that, but I'll give you a hint. Oro Valley is pretty safe. <laughs> uh, could a Toyota Camry safely be driven up there when it snows? Ooh, snowing chains. You need chains, man. You need to get chains. You need to invest in some chains. Because what are you going to take? You're going to take the Bumblebee, uh, or I'm sorry, the Beeline. I keep getting them confused. But actually, depending on where you're going in northern Arizona, you're going to take the uh, the freeway. Um, so that freeway that we're referring to on the west, on the eastern side of Arizona that takes you up to the Mogollon Rim is called Highway 87. And even on a cold day, it's not going to be too bad on the highway. But once you get off the highway, I don't know about a Toyota Camry. Uh, it depends. I mean, are you going on how, how bad the weather is really? But the I-17, you know, you might even need chains if you're going up there. What you don't want to be driving is you don't want to be driving with chains on your tires when it's, uh, well, I guess if it's black ice, you know, you could slip. 
that's the thing about these when you're coming down into Phoenix, that's why they call Phoenix the Valley, right? The Valley, because if you look north, you look north this way, all those mountains, that's where that's all the high country. That's northern Arizona. It starts basically back up by Cave Creek. You look back there, all those mountains, it just starts ascending. So when you're driving up to Flagstaff, you're constantly going up in all elevation all the way up until you get to the Verde Valley. And then you go to you go through the Oak Canyon, you get to Flagstaff, and it's constantly going up. But that's the Bumblebee. That's I-17. They call it the Bumblebee. The other one's called the Beeline because that's what the freeway does through the mountains. It meanders like a beeline. Yeah, you don't really need chains, Mary's right. You don't really need chains, but if you're if if it's you're saying if it's snowing, like you know, real legit snow, like we're in a blizzard, you might need chains. <laughs> but if it's just uh, most of the time, we, we maybe get like three or four of those a year at the tops. All right, what's your question, Kenya? Can you talk about the diversity in North versus the South? I know we are in Arizona, but is one more area more diverse than the other? Yeah. Uh, in northern Arizona, you're not going to have as many black people as you would have in southern Arizona. Uh, southern Arizona is pretty diverse. Northern Arizona, like I said, they're kind of like, uh, they're not, geez, I don't want to offend people, right? But they're not like uh, rednecks, okay? They're just country. They're country, but they're not like Louisiana country. They're not, they're like, kind of like if you've ever been to California or Oregon, they're kind of like that, like those kind of country people. Uh, they're not really, I don't think they're very bigoted, so if that's what you're concerned about, but there's not a lot of diversity. Um, Southern, Arizona, Southern Arizona is going to have a lot more diversity. You're going to have uh, Hispanics. You're going to have uh, more, uh, more Asians, more black people, more white people, you know, more European people, whatever, you know, I mean, more Indian people, but you'll get all that up in Northern Arizona. It just won't be as diverse. Like I would be surprised. I'm pretty sure if we looked at Northern Arizona University, that's NAU, the Lumberjacks, if we looked at the, the, the population demographics of the enrollment of NAU compared to Arizona State University or Arizona, that would probably be on par with what you would see. So What's the racial uh, demographics of NAU? Look that up. And that's probably what you're going to see. For, you know, I mean, actually, we could look it up. How about this? Let's, let's take a look at Flagstaff by demographics. So 73% white in uh, Flagstaff. 1.9% black or African-American, 11.7% Native American. So there are a lot of Native Americans in Flagstaff. 1.9% Asian, 7.3% uh, other races. So we'll put in uh, Phoenix demographics here. Well, and they don't want to show up the uh, normal... They want to make me work for this demographic. Let's see here. Okay, so the most common ancestries in Phoenix were Mexican, 35.9%, German, 15%, Irish, 10%, English, 9%, African American, 6.5%, Italian, 4.5%, American, 2.7%. So not a lot of people, original Phoenicians. Uh, th this was as of 2010 census, though, so trying to get a little bit more. Okay, so, I mean, Tucson's going to be about the same as Phoenix, uh, I would say. So, yeah, northern Arizona is not as diverse, no. Yeah, lots of – Zeus said it. It's, it's real. You're gonna One of the things you're going to notice in northern Arizona is there's going to be a lot more natives. Uh you don't, you, you don't see a lot of natives in Arizona. They're mostly on the reservations. And if you're not, let me just say this, because I had someone who was a native come onto the channel and ask that I say this. I didn't, I have to say it now. If, if you're not living on the reservation and you're not going to the reservation for the casino, like the fringe, you don't need to be going deep into these reservations. 
So the natives don't really want you on the reservation uh, dilly dallying around, checking it out and exploring if you're not a Native American. Why do I say that? Because I had Native American people come on to this channel and ask me to say something to y'all. So if, if, if you see there's a reservation and it, you're not there to go just do some of the commercial stuff, don't go around there exploring because for lack of a better word, you're not welcome. Tucson is 90% Hispanic, pretty much only Mexicans. Uh, Tucson or the surrounding areas? Tucson may be 90% Hispanic. In Arizona, the pay is much lower. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons why IBM and Google and whatnot are, or some of these Silicon Valley companies, Silicon Valley companies are moving out to Phoenix to get away from that because in order for people to live in Silicon Valley, they've got to pay $2.5 million to own a, a house in Palo Alto that's four bedrooms. 1.3 million in Phoenix gets you a mansion in Scottsdale. So, I mean, it's, yeah, I think, I think in order to, I think they said in order to live in Palo Alto in the Bay area, you need to make over a hundred thousand dollars. And in order to really live comfortably, you need to make about $300,000 a year in the Bay area in Phoenix to live comfortably, comfort, comfortably 60,000 household income. Obviously, the more you can make, the more comfortable you're going to be. I mean, so 60000 in Phoenix is like 140000 in the Bay Area, something like that. Tucson pay is lower. It's worth the drive to Phoenix to get paid more. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point, Chuck. Kenya. But then again, I have not been everywhere. Okay. What did you say, Kenya? I was trying to read what you were saying up above. Thanks. You rock. I just m moved down here and I'm not seeing what people are saying about Arizona not being diverse. Yeah. So Phoenix is diverse. Tucson diverse. It's the cities that are diverse. We're talking when you go out into the rural areas, it's either native American or um, mostly white. I mean, that's, that's what's out there. And um, yeah. Chuck says, I would not get out of bed for $60,000. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, there's people out there making 15 bucks an hour. I think Walmart's only paying people 12 bucks an hour. I learned the hard way. Maybe it's not the, the city for you. Try somewhere else. Uh, what are you talking about, Tiffany? Oh, you're talking to, uh, who, who are you talking to? Jamie Sharp. What did Jamie Sharp say? Okay, so here we go. Master of reality. Cave Creek, Arizona in the fall, winter, and spring. Sholo in the summer with an RV. Master of reality. There you go. You hit the, He just get or whoever master of reality is, he or she, just gave you the formula for success, for happiness in Arizona. You got to get out of Arizona in June, July, and August. All the other all the other months in Phoenix, you're good to go. Oh, video is buffering. Is it not coming in anymore? Is the video coming in, guys? Smash up the likes if you guys could see it. I'm at 51 likes. Let's see up. You want me to keep going or? Okay, I'm getting videos are good. Okay, you guys say the video is good, I'll keep going. All right, so back on subject here. Uh, jobs are pretty hard to find in Flagstaff. Main industries are Gore and Purina, BNSF Railroad, and Flagstaff Medical Center. Any other job is minimum wage, but the cost of living is high. Mary just told you a very true statement. Let me just uh, rephrase that because I was reading it pretty choppy. The reason I read it choppy is because this thing keeps moving up. So I'll have my eyes focused on a line and then it moves up when someone comments. Um, so the, the what she was saying was there's not a lot of jobs in Flagstaff and it's high cost of living. 
So for someone considering moving to Flagstaff, keep that in mind. It's expensive. That's why a lot of people with big money go to Flagstaff. And, and actually, these people with big money, they don't even live there most of the time in the winter. They just live there in the summertime. So they'll have these big houses, you know, five-bedroom houses in places like Forest Highlands, this golf, this private golf community. But they don't, you know, they got such so much money, they can afford to have multiple different houses. And so that's what they do in Flagstaff. And so it drives up the price of rent and everything. Uh, but the jobs don't pay a lot. There's not a lot of jobs in uh, northern Arizona anywhere. I mean, where are you going to work if you're working in Sedona? It's like you got to be coming to Sedona with money. It's like moving to Hawaii. Like when I lived in Hawaii, if you're not coming to Hawaii with money, you're going to be homeless, sleeping on the beach. Darren says, there is no reason to move to flag. Nothing there. I mean, yeah, I mean, you might. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Uh, but. I was going to say, I mean, if you're really trying to move to a place like Flag, you might consider looking at like Durango, Colorado or Ure or Colorado Springs or something like that in Denver. I mean, but Flagstaff, that's why Flagstaff never takes off in population because, I mean, only what, 100,000 people live in Flagstaff? It's not, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it grows maybe, it's a slow growing city. It's, it's, there's no real reason to live there. It's not great industry. It's cold. It's it's okay weather in the summertime. A lot of people from Phoenix with big money will go build a second house there, but that's about it. If, if I was going to Northern Arizona, I would say, take a look at the Verde Valley. Take a look at Prescott Valley. Take a look at Prescott, that, that area. That's the area that you want to look. Prescott, because that Verde Valley I'm talking about, that's Sedona. Well, Sedona is at the Red Rocks, at the foot of the Red Rocks. You come south of there, you're in the Verde Valley. Why do they call it the Verde Valley? Because of the Verde River. What is Verde in Spanish? Green. That's why they call it. So Green River, but we call it the Verde. That's where uh, these Native American cliff dwellings are. If you ever heard of Montezuma's Castle? Montezuma's Castle is on the eastern fork of the Verde. I live in Nebraska, or Miss Erica Marie. I was living in Nebraska, living off my retirement pension. Then I moved to Arizona and had to get a job. Well, there you go. So, yeah, I mean, what, what, there's a pension and then you get Social Security. I think what Social Security these days is like $800 a month. I don't know. I don't collect Social Security, but that's what someone who was on Social Security told me he got. But he's an expat. I don't know if expatriates get less money than... Uh, normal Americans, but I'm like, who can live off of $800 a month? <laughs> Get the heck out of here. I mean, they're doing the senior citizens like that. And then senior citizens are getting a pension. And usually those pensions are like $400. So you're talking $1,200 a month. You can't live on $1,200 a month in Phoenix. No way. You would have to have, you would have had to have been very money savvy, bought and paid off your home, bought and paid off your car to even be able to remotely even get by living on $1,200 a month as a retiree. It's pretty crazy. I mean, it, it, that is a bubble waiting to happen in the United States, this retirement bubble. It's, it's not a joke. Guys, you guys can also ask the question in living in Arizona, our group. So I see a lot of questions going unanswered here because there's so many flying around. I can only answer so many. But people in there are always answering questions. I know a lot of you guys don't like Facebook. I'm not... <laughs> I get that. I get that. I get that. But, you know... Don't put a lot of your data on there and don't do too much. <laughs> but, you know, it's a good place to hang out for a forum in these groups because the server stays up and it's pretty good design. That's why we're using it. Cost of living in Arizona is higher than it should be. It's dumb, says Darren Kroc. Okay. <laughs> Never uh, fails. If Darren is here, we are going to have the pessimistic side of life in Arizona. So I read his comments because we got to have our resident resident pessimist uh, throwing hardballs at us, right? <laughs> uh, let's see the dirty knobs. If you have all your points paid in your looking eighteen hundred a month, waiting on a border job in Douglas, making eighty to a hundred k a year, is it worth it? Sierra Vista versus Douglas. Sierra Vista. Sierra Vista is a nice area. 
I mean, if you're if you're living in if you're going to be working down in the border, yeah, you don't want to be any farther south than Sierra Vista. But in that area, you can check out Saw Rita. That's that's probably the, the the best place to be if you can if you don't mind that drive to Saw Rita. Um, if you're over in say uh, the other side of Arizona, if 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 you're one of those guys who's going to have to be working the 256 uh, or even the two down there by Y, because I, there's going to be people out there by Y. You know, the, there's a town called Y. There's Ajo and Y. And that whole area is un, uh, uninhabitable land right along the border. What happens is, this is one of the reasons why a lot of people sensibly say we need a border wall. What happens is, number one is, you can't ever go to a country without proper documentation. Like, I'm getting ready to go travel to uh, the world. I need one of these. <laughs> there's, there's not a single immigration is going to let me in without one of these, Okay. Some of them need visas. Like I, in order to get into China, I have to have a visa. Okay, so these visas, they're real. And so the United States, some people in the United States have decided that the United States of all the countries on earth, uh, immigration documentation is not important. Well, it is, because it's important to everyone else and it's important here too. And so because of that, people, when they're crossing the border, they're crossing illegally without documents and what happens is in the summertime, it's so hot there when they're bringing their families, it's uninhabitable. I mean, in the daytime, heat stroke. Uh, so they're they're in a position of desperation and they see an opportunity because they just got to run across the border, right? Well, what ends up happening is they get stuck in this uninhabitable area. And if you don't believe me, look at the map from Yuma all the way down to where he's talking about there by Nogales. You go to Mexico, you drive down to Mexico and you cross the border in that area, go down there right now in August, it is so hot. Imagine the people who are crossing the border on foot and they're with kids. This is why these ranchers and these farmers, they find these kids, they find these people dead in the desert. And, and, and they're not gonna be able to do that if there's a wall, that's the idea, right? So that's the advocacy behind why they should build a wall because it's going to stop people from just crossing the border as easily. Now, on the contrary to that, in the winter time, it gets very cold there, believe it or not. So you also have people getting hypothermia that are crossing the border in the winter time down there. And so him working for the border patrol, uh, that's what he's going to be up against. He's going to have to be going up and down on the quads, up and down that whole borderline. And if he's talking about going over there towards... Um, uh, Sierra Vista working for the border patrol over there. That's Nogales, but there's a big chunk of border from Nogales all the way to Yuma that's really uninhabited. And if you go down to Rocky Point, Puerto Penasco, you go through Y, through Sonoida, you'll see it's hot. We're, and that's no joke. <laughs> Chuck Miller, he says, we've found many dead bodies in the desert in the southern areas. Yeah, and it's crazy because they're taking kids with them. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but can you even handle that much heat? Because where are you gonna where are you gonna get shelter in that heat? Under a tree? I mean, you can't bring big old air air conditioners with you on your back when you're trying to. Because basically, the second you're running from crossing the border, you're on the run. You're hoping that you can get to a point where you're getting picked up. Because they can't run along the they can't hitchhike or anything because you know there's border patrol all over there, so they're forced into these really scary areas where it's so hot and they're bringing kids with them. And these kids, man, phew, scary, scary for the kids. The TS, um, let's see here. Thanks, Beak. Uh, Sonoran Desert is a wasteland, very dangerous. Oh, it's very dangerous. I mean, yeah. You guys saw that that video about or that story about the HVAC guy, the old man who was just up in the attic doing fixing an air conditioner and they didn't hear from him for 30 minutes. And they they said they heard noises and then they stopped hearing noises. And after 30 minutes, they asked, they went up in the attic to see if he was OK. He was dead. It gets hot because people get heat stroke. And that's just with some exposure. OK, that's obviously attics get a lot hotter, but people get heat stroke just being out in it, you know, so. 
Uh, Zeus says, I've seen Mexicans running across the desert late at night near Patagonia, Arizona. Yeah, it's better to move at night because, I mean, if you are going to cross the border, you should do it at night. Or you should wait till it's not summer. Darren says the snoring desert will kill you. It will. I mean, it's not just the heat, too. It's uh, the rattlesnakes. Um, there's, it, it's a desert. It's it's a real deal. It's nature. It's a tough nature. All right. Chuck says illegals walk at night in the summer. I have many videos and pics of the Congo lines trotting through the desert. Yeah, let's let's tone it down a little bit. Um, we don't need to talk about too much crazy stuff. Um, I that was my. I mean, I, I know I went into that, but I was saying, I was giving that story to him because he's going to be working for the, the the border patrol. Island B, Jeff, what is the best airport in the area? Phoenix Sky Harbor, uh, Mesa, or Tucson? Hands down, Sky Harbor. We talked about this in the last video, Island B. Uh, uh, Sky Harbor is the best airport. It's one of the best airports in all of America. I, I'm surprised they haven't even nominated. Like if we go to a list and we say best airports in America, right? So let's see. Best airports in America. What do they say? <laughs> um, so this is the list from 2018. I, I'd be surprised if they don't have Phoenix Sky Harbor. Oh, no, they did rank Phoenix. I didn't know Phoenix Sky Harbor... Okay, I'm not. I'm telling you, I haven't looked at this list yet. Guess what the number one airport in America is? Phoenix Sky Harbor. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I'll show you guys the list. This guy literally, and I, that's the first time I've seen this list. Uh, so yeah, Phoenix is rated the best airport in America. So there you go. I mean, the only reason I would use Mesa is, uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't even really use Mesa. Um, Unless, yeah, I don't know why I would use Mesa Gateway Airport because Phoenix is rated the best in, uh, well, they, they rated it number one. And um, I mean, what airport is better? Yeah, Mesa does have an airport. It's called Mesa Gateway. <laughs> Darren, Darren says Phoenix Sky Harbor is a joke. All right, no more talking about politics in here. Um, I we're not doing politics. Um, let's see, best airport to travel: Buffalo, New York. Oh, okay. Uh, Darren says Phoenix probably paid someone to write that. Maybe, but then again, I mean, is that is Phoenix really that bad of an airport to you? I think it's a pretty dang good airport, and that's no joke. I mean. There's better airports internationally, like Singapore or Hong Kong or Tokyo doesn't have a very good airport. I would have thought, well, at least uh, Narita is not a very good airport. Like when you fly into Tokyo, Tokyo being one of the biggest uh, airports in all the world or cities in all the world. You know, you fly into Haneda or Narita and you would think that it would be amazing. But Narita does not impress me at all. I haven't flown into Haneda yet. Maybe I need to go there. But um Singapore is phenomenal, but Phoenix doesn't even compare to Singapore. Dewey, Arizona in the house. B Fields. There we go. B Fields. <laughs> I'm a native New Yorker. Believe me, Sky Harbor is great, says Van Essa. Yeah, I, let me go to another list to see because that was that's the number one. So if you go, if you type in best airports in America, the very first search result is thepointsguy.com. And that's the list that I pulled. I'm going to go to another one called Upgraded Points. Let's see where they rank Phoenix. Oh, they're ranking Portland. They're ranking Portland as the number one. I've been to Portland. I don't think so. They got Anchorage at number three. Number two is Tampa. Sacramento, number four. Indianapolis, number five. Minneapolis, St. Paul. And then Phoenix. And then Phoenix is ahead of Denver and San Francisco. San Francisco is a pretty good airport. Like if, when I'm flying international and I'm coming in from Asia, from Tokyo or Hong Kong, I'm flying into SFO. I'm not even doing LAX. I tried, I, I, maybe I flew into Seattle one time. 
Seattle's just such a the second leg of that flight down to Phoenix is a long haul. So it's a short flight from San Francisco to Phoenix, but it's even shorter to go into LAX. But I, I think it's shorter flight from Tokyo to San Francisco by maybe a couple minutes than it is Tokyo to LA. But LA is terrible. Sorry if you're from LA. LA is a terrible airport. It's super crowded. The food is no good. Uh, it's old. SFO is a better airport. I'm surprised, though, they rank Phoenix better than Denver and SFO, San Fran. All right. Rant over on airports. <laughs> oh, gosh. LaGuardia in New York sucks. I thought all of New York airports are terrible. But what do I know? Oh, Charlotte. They have a good airport. Oh, Darren. Good old Darren. He, he made an announcement. <laughs> Charlotte's a good airport. <laughs> you said something positive. Um, why do people drive like crap in Phoenix? Great question, Charles St. John. I don't know. Uh, let's let's try to let's try to hypo let's try to put a hypothesis to form a thesis here. Uh, why do people drive terrible in Phoenix? Well, because they spend a lot of time in cars. People in Phoenix get a lot of experience driving really fast for long periods of time. So they're in the car for a long time. They, they're really experienced driving and texting and eating while they're doing all that. So, you know, like that's that's the typical Arizona driver, like eating, texting and driving. Like so many people text and drive in Arizona or look at their phones when they're driving because they spend sometimes an hour on the phone on the, on the on the road. That Arizona can't even properly enforce texting and driving laws because they would literally be writing everyone a ticket. So like Governor Doug Doozy, he had to make an emergency announcement just recently because a cop was hit by on the side of the road by someone who was texting and driving. But if you get if you get caught texting and driving, it's a warning until 2020 something like because so many people spend so much time on the road. They've got they're looking at their phones. Uh, but that's just one of the things they're doing. Uh, they're smoking cigarettes and whatever else they're smoking, these vape pens and whatever. Um, so, they, you know, they're just impatient. They're spending so much time on the road. They're going 75, 80 miles an hour. You know, that's just how it is. I mean, you're not legally allowed to go 80, but people do it. And then they got these big trucks, man, like dualies. Like every firefighter or forest service guy or border patrol dude Seems like they all either have a really souped up, you know, sports car Dodge Charger or something, or one of those big diesel uh, trucks. And man, these big diesel trucks, they love to go 90, you know, <laughs> for real. So, I mean, I don't know why people get drive like crap, but that those are some ideas. I'm, li I'm looking for ideas of what you guys say. So many trucks and SUVs. Yeah, there's a lot of trucks and SUVs on the road. It's crazy because, and, and like I was driving down the road today and this dude, he was like, I was like, is this guy going to come over? Is he going to cross the center line and come into my lane? Like he did cross the center line. Okay. And he was driving one of those big work trucks, like a huge truck. Like, I mean, I'm like, dude, I don't want to be hitting this guy. So I, I, I instantly in my mind, I'm like, you got to be on the defensive. If these people are crossing the center lines. You know what it means to cross the center line, right? So that means they're going, they're swerving into your lane in oncoming traffic. Like, who does that? Like, if like, how do they get so comfortable where they can actually even do that? Like, if, if you're going to be looking at your phone, at least kind of hug the, the right side of the road. Don't possibly swerve into the middle of the, into the middle of the road, cross the center line. But people do that. And I was just like, that guy, he probably didn't even think twice about it. He probably didn't even flinch. To him, it's just another day on the road. Uh, Darren says they're either drunk or high, which both are illegal to do when you're driving. The speed limit is insane here in New York. It's 65 on the highway says Vanessa Phoenix drivers can't be worse than Orlando. I don't believe it. Oh, the worst drivers are in Florida. I was, yeah, I was on the freeway in Florida and we watched the car accident happen and we turned around in the, you know, in the grass because they got grass out there. You turn around and we, we were turning right around. And the guy was in a Winnebago and he got out of his Winnebago 
And then he was checking his car. And the guy who got in the car accident in the Winnebago got hit by a car on traffic while he was out inspecting his vehicle. And he rolled over the car. And I was like, get me out of this death, death trap known as Florida. Florida is crazy drivers. I've never seen so much crazy stuff driving on the roads. Oh, the worst drivers are in Spain and Argentina. All right. I might be going to Argentina. <laughs> I've been to Spain. Uh, yeah, Spain, uh, they're pretty crazy. Miami was my worst driving experience. Yeah, so I guess I don't know if Arizona is that bad. Um, but we do spend a lot of time in our cars. My wife has been hit two times in a month, totaling the Explorer while Kia was getting repaired. Okay, see, hearing all these stories, this is why I, I keep – advocating for a high-speed rail because we need to get some of these cars off the roads and people who don't feel comfortable driving on these crazy freeways with these crazy drivers they'll be the first to get on to the, the high-speed rail that connects to the mid-range rail that connects to the light rail to get home these people who don't like driving there's a lot of people who don't like driving they get anxiety driving like you'd be surprised just because you personally don't get anxiety driving doesn't mean there's not one in four people who get anxiety driving. And those people who get anxiety driving will be the first to say, hey, I'm going to save on insurance. I'm going to save on registration. I'm going to save on gas. And I'm going to save on car payment. And I'm going to ride the high speed rail. <laughs> but right now it won't work because you got this light speed rail that goes 35 miles an hour, takes forever to get it all the way to the other side of the town. And it's not really practical. So they need to add on to it, make it better. But this is why I like rail. So yes, I'm a I'm a I'm a rail bug. <laughs> I'll still drive my car, okay? But there's people out there who don't like driving and they shouldn't have to only be able to drive because there's we're in Phoenix and it's urban sprawl. Usually unlicensed drivers are here illegally. Okay? Um Carjacking is not a good idea because people carry is what um, Chuck Miller was saying. Uh, Killjoy said, can I expect my insurance rates to go down moving from Florida to Arizona? Ooh, from Florida, Arizona. Let me let me research that. Is is car insurance more expensive in Arizona or Florida? Obviously, I don't know that because I. I don't know the answer. <laughs> I don't have that in my database of brain. Let's see here. Okay, so your average annual rate in Arizona is 1300. That's annual, that means per year. That means you're just paying a little bit over $100 a month. Florida, 1819. That means you're going to be paying about 140 to 150 dollars a month. So there you go. Yes. If you're moving from Florida, you will save money in Arizona on insurance. I don't know about registration, though, so I don't know if I can pull that data. Even. No Florida drivers aren't bad. We just drive fast and fast-paced. <laughs> there you go. Arizona is a fraction of New York car insurance. Love my Arizona, says Vanessa. Is there any HOA-free homes that are newer in Santan? Queen Creek area. Okay, for those of you who are thinking about moving to Santan or Queen Creek, by the way, we've got 95 people watching and 68 up likes. If you're new to the live stream, crush up the likes. And if you got a lot of questions, because questions are flying through here, join our group. I just posted the link right there. Join our group. You can ask those questions in there and a lot of people answering them. But back to your question. Okay, HOAs, yes, there is HOA free homes out here and they're cheaper than most. So $199,000 for a brand new home, no HOA. The quality, so-so. Smaller, yes. I mean, this is a 2,000 square foot house, HOA. No HOA, 199,000, probably 1,500 square feet maybe. Um, but if you're moving out to Queen Creek or Santan Valley or Mesa, I need to say this. It's a new city. Yes, everything's new. That means 
There's not going to be a lot of culture. It's going to be kind of bland. Everyone's going to be from somewhere else. You know, that's so it's a transient city. Everyone's trying to find their identity and their culture and your kids are going to be going through all that. The, the food restaurants are all fast food. It's all chain. It's all corporate. It's all, you know, fast food, everything. There's no mom and pop. There's not much mom and pop. And the mom and pops are being pushed out and swallowed up by urban sprawl. So you got to give an area like Santan and Queen Creek five to 10 years to develop. And that's if the economy remains strong in the building boom that we're going through. We are going through a building boom. There is no doubt about it. This is nothing short of a building boom. To call it not a building boom, regardless of if it's a bubble, I'm not saying it's not a bubble, but I will say it is a building boom out here. And they're building new stuff left and right, and they've got plans in the pipeline. Assuming the economy stays strong like this, um, it's gonna, it, it could take five to 10 years for this area to become really livable because Right now, I mean, in order to do anything, I've got to, I've got to leave Santa. I mean, unless I want uh, fast food, which no, I don't like fast food. If I'm eating out, right? I mean, I could go to Denny's. I, I got Denny's and like some other restaurant. Okay, Queen Creek's got a little bit more. They're, they've got plans to build a lot more, a lot sooner too. You know, they've got these amusement parks coming. They've got these massive uh, shopping center uh, build pro building projects that are coming along. But out here. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're 15 to 20 minutes away from most. Uh, it's it's like, and it, it's not like one of those things where you're like out of it all to where it's more relaxing. So it's actually like, it's kind of stressful because there's so many, the, the, the infrastructure is so behind and there's so many new cars and new, new stuff moving in. So the traffic gets a little bit crazy and there's not a lot to do. So these are just some things to keep in mind. I don't want you guys to come out to Santan Valley, Queen Creek, and think it's all hunky-dory, big party, uh, great deal, uh, because it's not really like that. <laughs> you get a great deal on a home, but most stuff is 10 to 20 minutes away. Okay? Uh, Santan Valley has some serious water and sewer issues. That's been resolved. There was a $100 million lawsuit against Johnson. You're talking about Johnson Utilities. Where I live, I'm not subject to Johnson Utilities. I actually have Queen Creek. I don't know why they don't just call where I live Queen Creek. That's why I call it Queen Creek. But uh, not everyone in Santan Valley deals with Johnson, but the state, from what I understand, is the state took over Johnson Utilities. And uh, that whole issue with sewage and water has been fixed. Open a restaurant in Santan Valley that accepts Bitcoin. Oh, trust me, man. I'm waiting for Bitcoin to go up so I can build a restaurant. That's like one of my things. Like, I'm like, oh, man. But here's the thing. Just between you guys. Uh, I talk. I, the, so the, 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 the city officials, they're pretty, they're pretty uh, open. You know, you can talk to them on social media. Like, you, you can message the Queen Creek mayor. You can message the, like, on social media. I don't know how it is in other places. And I and someone was saying on there, they said, "Oh yeah, we want to, we want to, we want some mom and pop, something non corporation. We want a steakhouse, we want a bar." But then they went on and said something else. They said because certain religions are out here, okay. They so they mentioned the religion. Some of you guys already know what religion I'm talking about, but nothing against it. I like. I think all, most of my neighbors are that religion. They're pretty cool. I mean, they're friendly, they're, but they don't drink. They don't drink coffee and they don't drink alcohol. So what, what do you think there's not a lot of when there should be a lot of for the people? There should be, a, there should be like a couple more coffee shops, but you only got one Starbucks and a Dunkin Donuts and a hundred thousand people. And then like zero bars. So there's zero nightlife for adult entertainment in a city of a hundred thousand people. And so they said, well, that's because uh, religious uh, leaders are suppressing the, that opportunity for the non-religious types to uh, the non-practicers of that religion to have entertainment at night, which there's a lot of people who are not a part of that religion. And he said to that, he said to us, he said, uh, no, that's not the case. There's no religious uh, lobbyist out there um, trying to stop the growth of adult entertainment, you know, nightlife. Uh, 
because of religion. It's, it's a full free market economy. And if investors want to build out here, they can. Yeah, party at my house. My house. That's what I, I, I built a party house, but I realized I need to build a bigger house for an actual party because I got like 15 neighbors, not 15. Yeah, they could hear a party at my house. In any one of those 15 homes, all it takes is one to be like, hey, noise disturbance. So I can't, it's like kind of, these houses are too built on top of each other to really have like a, a party. Arizona does not have the balanced economy to survive a crash. Too many low paying jobs and cost of living is too high and no water. But um, here comes Darren. That was a Darren Croc comment. Darren, it, it, I feel like uh, I feel like if um, you guys ever seen those talk shows where there's there's this person who's positive and then there's a person who who shares the pessimistic side of things. <laughs> that's why that's why I give Darren his um, such a such a so much um, airtime. <laughs> here he goes again. HOAs don't like parties. True. Part not parte at my house. No. Uh, anyways, so. Uh, utilities pocketed all the money. Johnson Utilities, uh, maybe they did. I don't know. What do you think about Wickenburg? Wickenburg is beautiful in between Wickenburg and here. I mean, Wickenburg is, that's an old cowboy town, old country bumpkin town. They're starting to build like retirement communities and pretty nice communities out there because it's beautiful high desert. But I haven't been to Wickenburg in a while. Uh, Wickenburg was just a stop on the way to Vegas. A nice stop. It's a stop. If, if I, mean, I mean, whenever we go to drive up to Vegas, you know, you you would really only stop in Kingman or Wickenburg. So if you didn't get gas in Wickenburg, you were going to get it in Kingman. And if you're coming back from Vegas, if you didn't get gas in Kingman, you were going to get it in Wickenburg. So Wickenburg's always been like a, a pit stop. And then if you ever got off and walked around there, you would just find an old kind of cowboy town with locals. But they're building communities out there because urban sprawl is knocking on Wickenburg's door. Mormons do have parties. We just stay sober. You're right, Jay. They do have get-togethers. My neighbors, like I said, I get along with them. But they said, "Oh, we'll come over to your party, but we'll just drink our we'll just bring our our drinks." So they'll they'll hang out with you. They will. Oh, they're friendly. I'm telling you, they're friendly. Chuck Miller, nothing to see in Wickenburg, but a cool town in Yarnell up the hill. Yeah, Yarnell. Oh, Yarnell, that's where that fire was. Ever thought about having a meet and greet, Jeff? We can ask you stuff in person. I have not thought about that, but we could think about that. Um, Darren Croc says Mormons are great. Actually, by the way, we don't call them Mormons. They're called LDS. I found that out. Um, so LDS, Latter-day Saints. And that came from the president of the Mormon church. I just want to know where Darren lives since he hates AZ so much, says Andrew. Darren, where do you live? You've been, you've been called out. <laughs> Just wait till Arizona runs out of water. That's a whole nother subject all in of itself. The Arizona water crisis is what we were talking about with the Ho'okam earlier in the video about how the Ho'okam built the irrigation, uh, you know, the, the canals and whatnot here in Phoenix. And then in the for, around about the 1400s, uh, historical data suggests that the Ho'okam people just disappeared. And they were saying, well, what caused the Ho'okam, a whole people who inhabited the Phoenix Valley area, in particular Mesa, what happened to them after around about 1400s? Did the did they have a drought? Was it a famine? What was it? And the reason they want to know is because could it happen again? And what if it, instead of, and we're talking a, a whole calm population of 50,000 people, give or take estimations. Right now, what's Phoenix metro area at? Uh, about 6 million. So... Uh, I don't know exactly what's what's Phoenix Metro. I get different numbers every time I look, but Phoenix Metropolitan. They're saying Phoenix Metropolitan is uh, four point eight 
but that's as of the 2017 uh, census. I've seen higher than that, though. I know Arizona is at around about 7 million. Do you guys dance bachata? I don't personally dance bachata. I don't know what bachata is. I know what salsa is. That's about it. And I haven't danced salsa. I mean, I don't. The only type of dance I do is usually at like hip hop nightclubs. <laughs> I don't really. I definitely don't do country dancing. I just. I'm not good at that. Uh, I can dance to hip hop when I've had a couple drinks. <laughs> but I don't do much dancing. 4.8 million is too much, says Darren. East Coasters tell it like it is. Darren, it says on the internet it's 4.8 million, not 4.1. <laughs> and then Darren says, come to Chicago, a real city. It's a Dominican dance. I would like to go to Dominican. If I went to Dominican Republic, I'm sure I would find out what that dance is. I haven't been to any of the Caribbean. I'm just, like I said, I'm going to Mexico in two days to Cancun, Riviera Maya. How's it 4.1, 4.1 million? I think that's an under, that's an under, that's a smaller number than what it's worth um, because there's also undocumented people that are living here. American and uh, non-citizens of the United States. So to say it's 4.1 million, I don't think so. I want to move back. They're getting easier to get along with. Chi-Town is trash, says Coyote. Welcome to Chicago, the murder capital. Okay, we're getting into the, um, we're getting back into the politics. I, I, that's why I can't guys, filter the, the uh, reading when I can't read everything. Hey, what's up, Ted? <laughs> Ted just showed up. Um, how, how was everyone's day today? Mine was good. Thanks for asking. But it's more interesting to ask about you guys, how your guys' day was. Um, Sick Mitt says, Debbie Darren. Oh, man. Oh, man. How you gonna, how, are, are you going to let him do that to you, Darren? <laughs> Debbie Darren. Oh, man. You guys, Debbie Darren's Debbie Downer is what he's referring to. Because Darren, everything he says about Phoenix is negative. Is there anything you liked about Phoenix, Darren? Can Arizona really have have fun out of water? Oh, you mean have fun out of water or run out of water? Because you said, can Arizona really fun out of water? I think you're asking, can it run out of water? Run, yeah, okay. Can Arizona run out of water? Well, that's where you got to familiarize yourself with the reservoirs. And we've talked about this a couple times. I don't know if I talk about it, and some of you guys have already heard of it, heard me talk about it. But the reason I talk about it is for the 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 concern that all of you guys are going to have about the water issue. When the reservoirs dry up, that's when you got a problem. And so, as far as we can see, and as far as we know, you've got Roosevelt. I don't know what the water level of Roosevelt Lake is, but that's the one at the very tip top. But let's take a look at Roosevelt Lake water level. Uh, okay. Okay, so as of June 12, 2019, it was at 1,283 feet above sea level. And it was expected to rise. And that is called the Grand Coulee Dam. So below there is going to be what? Canyon Lake. And so as, if, if any of those lakes, starting with Roosevelt, were to dry up, you might, you might uh, consider that to be a little bit of a oh no moment. And then if it dried up by the time it got to Apache Lake, same deal. And then if you ever want to, if, if you ever saw that the Rio Salado, let's put it like this. If Rio Salado ever dried up, we'd really have problems. 
but Canyon Lake and then the Salt River pours into uh, Saguaro Lake, right? All of those are at pretty good levels and that's enough water to provide enough. That's quite a bit of water. We also talked about Lake Pleasant. That's the one that comes from the Agua Fria. Agua Fria is dry south of Lake Pleasant because all the water from the Agua Fria pours into Lake Pleasant on the west side. And then you have the Colorado River project or uh, Central Arizona project, which is the Colorado River. You have Lake Havasu and then you have Lake Mead. Lake Mead was at a point getting dangerously low. Uh, Lake Mojave, the same deal. But Lake Mead was the one that was really feeling it. And that's one that was pulling off a Cal or California pulls off a of Lake Mead. Las Vegas pulls off a of Lake Mead. And so does Arizona. So Lake Mead, the Colorado River was feeling a little bit of pressure recently in the last decade. And I didn't even mention uh, Bartlett or Horseshoe Lake along the Verde. So there's plenty of there's plenty of water out there. A lot of people don't realize the irrigation and, and those reservoirs, how they uh, connect. Okay, you say if, 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 if you were wanting to get in earlier on this live feed because we've been going for an hour and 26 minutes where it says subscribe, hit the bell. When you hit the bell, it tells you, it gives you a notification when we actually go live. So to those of you who are wondering why, uh, how you get the notification, that's how you do it. You have to turn on the bell next to subscribe. I'm not worried about the water, more concerned about the economy here. So a lot of people are having these concerns about the economy in Arizona and they're building the, the tech corridor over there in, in Mesa near Eastmark. So keep an eye on Eastmark uh, in Mesa because that's where the tech corridor is being built. And the tech corridor is going to bring in a lot of high paying jobs. And it's, it's, it's supposedly, it's kind of like a trickle down economics, which is, well, if high paying employers are moving into the area, that means people are going to have money here to do what? Spend money in the community. But the way the economy kind of works right now is it just goes straight into these corporations. No mom and pops get it. So it's either going to Walmart, Target, Costco, uh, McDonald's, Burger King, Olive Garden, Buffalo Wild Wings. And, and, and so it's like it's, it's a really great situation to be in if you're an oligarch. If you're if you're a if you're a really rich person, you're loving it. But if you're just, uh, you know. Average Joe, you got to you got to get like five sources of income. <laughs> so you might be you might have your main job and then you need about four other sources of income and you can do it. And then you can set yourself apart and then you can, you know, make a name for yourself. I don't know how you could get four sources of income. You could have a YouTube channel, maybe doing DIY or doing arts and crafts. I mean, the top uh, YouTube channels right now are for kids. People who make kids channels like the top grossing YouTuber uh, makes children's videos. Uh, another one that people are making a lot of money doing is video games. These kids, these young people, they just tune in to watch kids or other funny people play video games and they film themselves while they're playing the video games. So having a YouTube channel, uh, doing whatever you want to do that you're specializing in can make, can be another source of income. And then you have, uh, some people get dividends from investing in stocks. And so it just starts with a thought. So how are you going to get five sources of income in case one dries up? And then next thing you know, you're getting residual incomes of four to five hundred dollars a month. Right. So. From one income here, that's paying your car payment. And, and you know, so you got we got to get it's, it's a new economy. You, you, having five job or having five sources of income is realistic. It's not unrealistic and it should be a goal. Even if you are striving for five and you only get to three, you know, your main income and then a YouTube channel and then um, something else, dividends, or maybe you do landscaping or make jewelry on the side or have an Amazon store, have an eBay store or have a little travel agency or do network marketing that brings in money because you sell Amway global. I don't know. Who's Pootie Pie? 
I know who PewDiePie is. Pew, PewDiePie. Anyways, guys, it's been an hour and 30 minutes. I'm going to take off. I'm hungry. i got to make some phone calls and say what's up to some people. So I will see you guys later. Thanks for hanging out. And there we go.